You are welcome back to the conversation in New Central Television. We just concluded our conversation on anti-government demonstrations in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's now time for us to switch gears to look at the political situation in Nigeria with regards to the speakership position in the 10th State House, in the 10th National Assembly uh, leadership race. Now, in Nigeria, the battle for the 10th National Assembly leadership is getting intense. The G7 aspirant uh, for the Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives recently held a meeting with the greater majority and reached a consensus to present a joint candidate for the position of Speaker and Deputy Speaker. The G7, comprising prominent members such as Representative Ahmed Wase, Representative Liu Batara, and Representative Yusuf Gagdi, expressed a commitment to collaboration with the minority caucus to present a unified front for the Speaker of the 10th National Assembly. During the meeting, the G7 representatives praised the minority caucus and assured them of their unwavering support, promising to nominate a consensus candidate to the greater majority. Representative Fred Agbedi, speaking on behalf of the greater majority, assured the G7 that the greater minority comprising members from the PDP and MP PP, ADC, YPP and the Labour Party, with a total of 182 representatives, would collaborate with all minority members elect to ensure a speaker that represents the interest of all. Now, joining me on the conversation this evening to discuss this, I have the programme director of Datafight, Adenike. Aloba, uh, she's joining live from Abuja, the federal capital territory. Uh, thank you very much, Adenike, for joining us on the program. We're happy to have you. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening to you. Now, Adenike, what are the main objectives and outcomes of the meeting between the G7 aspirants and the Greater Majority Caucus uh, regarding the Speaker position in the 10th House of, House of Representatives? Um... I mean, I think that uh, some of the conversations they've, ha uh, they've heard and, and if she, they've spoken about and the things that they're hoping to do is what you had shared, you know, just in the highlights before um, before you brought me on. And it's that, yes, they're going to do everything to ensure they get the correct leadership or uh, the right leadership. Everyone will be. Um, everyone will be carried along if I can borrow if I can borrow that term yes. because it's something Nigerians can identify with. But here is the thing: I think that one of the major, perhaps the missing link in all of this conversation, is the reason why this is such a drama. Yes. Um, on one hand, it appears just as if it's just political drama. You know, it's politics. Why does it matter, or why should it benefit from airspace? But I think that it it is important to help people understand why. Even if you do not belong to any party, why it should be of some interest, uh, um, the tussle, the leadership tussle in the National Assembly. I think the one thing, the one phrase, the one conversation that no one has used in describing this is uh, national cohesion and the implication of that with the distribution of leadership around regional lines and mm. what the implication of it for for representation for inclusion for diversity uh considering that nigeria is a very diverse country considering that nigeria has uh, six very distinct regions with very distinct personalities with uh, very distinct voices in terms of their preferences, in terms of representation and all of that. And I think that beyond, you know, what the parties are saying and what uh, uh, G7 now speaking, uh, the APC NWC presenting their own consensus candidate and all of that, I think the important thing that I think that people should be aware of uh, the lens from which we should be interpreting all of this political drama is from the a point of view of national cohesion. And the critical question has to be uh, how or for in, or, or so, how... Sorry to, sorry to butt in here, Adenike. When you talk of yes. national cohesion, are you talking about yes. a federal character type of balance that, you know, all positions should be equally distributed according to you regions? We already correct. have a president yes, from the South. Okay. That's it. Yes. So that, that's be, the beyond thing this that. drama, I mean, the yes. speakership position is just one of 360 members of the House of Representatives. And yes. things are done by consensus and votes. So 
at the end of the day, even if a speaker has only one vote, but would you, I mean, the way they're going about this, you know, several <laughs> meetings and all of that, yeah. is it just national cohesion? And why is there so much drama surrounding uh, the position of speakership? He won't do so things, I, I, he, he, he can't carry yeah. out decisions without consensus. Yes, yeah, so I, I agree with you that um, the drama does seem to be far more than the idea of the responsibility that sits on the mm -hmm. shoulder of decision makers, of lawmakers, you know, in Nigeria, which is why I think that um, those of us having that conversation outside of their bubble, the bubble of the National Assembly and yes. all the uh, actors, are the ones who have to emphasize that the goalpost um, the lens from which we should be interrogating their actions in all this drama, in all this, oh, you should go to the Northwest, you should go to the North Central, or oh, the South South, or the South East should be represented, has to be from, you know, bringing the country together, proper uh, distribution of powers, if you can think of it like that, and um, and inclusion and diversity. And this is, this is really the lens from which I think it is important to, uh, it's a developmental lens to talk about uh, diversity and inclusion. However, to speak specifically to uh, the, the thing you've addressed in terms of, look, it doesn't matter if you're a majority leader, if you don't have you know, uh, uh, the ears and the heart of the house, um, this is where I think that we can do better by right alongside the conversation around who is to become what is the conversation around even their capacity as lawmakers. Mm. What have they done before? What kind of bills have they proposed or assented to? What kind of committees have they sat on for those who have been in the house before? And use that to sort of set an agenda, to sort of set the bar above just this drama set the bar above all the noise around this. I mean, I feel like it is important because let, let me be honest with you. The truth is my initial position to this conversation had been, oh my God, we, we Nigerians have had enough drama. Can yes. we not? <laughs> but I also understand that Nigeria is a diverse country. Um, we have six geopolitical zones and whether people agree or not, data is telling us that Nigerians voted alongside regional lines, aside including, you know, uh, some of the other factors like religion yes. uh, and, you know, that dichotomy between the urban population and the rural population. But region played an important role uh, in our elections. And so it is from that lens that I think, okay, maybe it's important to pay attention uh, to some of the drama around, okay, it, 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 it would not be, and again, this is not me, I, I can't even speak to, I'm not a member of National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So even if I have an opinion on who should be the uh, Senate president or whatever, it, 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 doesn't, really, <laughs> it doesn't really count. Uh, but it, it would not seem fair to have, for instance, a president from a region, the vice president from the same region, the uh, senate president from the same region. I mean, this is the challenge. Okay. And I think this is a drama that is also playing out where you're having North Central saying, hey, we're not represented, you know, uh, you're not looking to us, you're not paying attention to us, which is kind of weird considering that um, uh, they've had two people sit on the seat of the presidency of the National Assembly. Uh, uh, we had uh, Senator Bukola Saraki and um, uh, Senator David Mark, who are from yes. the North Central. So the argument that, oh, nobody's considering us, we've maybe never, we've not sat here, okay. or we need to sit <laughs> here. It, it, it may be moot mm. a little, but I think that for us, individuals sitting outside of this pool and wondering what all this drama is about, it's important to remember that what should be driving this conversation? And I know that we're dealing with politicians and, you know, we don't, there, there's a significant trust gap between the populace and, yes. you know, our politicians. But it, it is important to note that this is not mindless or it shouldn't be mindless. This really is about diversity and inclusion. Every region represented where decision making uh, is happening. Given the peculiarities of even the challenges that face each region, okay. uh, we have... Uh, I, 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 I don't care. I would like want yes. you to hold your thoughts there for a second. I would like to bring in the second member of this uh, panel to join the discussion uh, Gideo Joe, he's a public affairs analyst and he joins us uh, from the nation's capital, uh, Buja. A warm welcome to you, uh, Gideo. Thanks for joining us on the conversation. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, Gideo, uh, I didn't care, spoke uh, to the question of capacity as lawmakers beyond all of this drama and, of course, uh, fair representation of all regions in the uh, allocation of uh, public offices, uh, principal. Uh, 
positions of the National Assembly and, of course, uh, the executive. Now, could you provide more information about the background and qualifications of some of these G7 aspirants vying for the speakership position? What are the individual strengths and experiences uh, that can make them suitable? And is it too late? Do you think the APC's National Working Committee's decision uh, could be rescinded? And uh, or is it it's they've made a final decision on their consensus candidate? Well, um, if I understand your question very well, um, issue of capacity, issue yes. of, uh, there's no doubt that there is no doubt that all of the candidates or the aspirants, as I may want to call them, uh, have capacity. They are all ranking members. Uh, the few the few members who are not uh, ranking members, I think they've um, they've stepped down. Uh, particularly the for the Senate, the governor of Ebony, who is just coming to the Senate for the first time. But for others, I think they are ranking members and the rule books and the standing order says uh, you have to be a ranking member. That means you, are, you must have been at uh, the National Assembly uh, previously. But beyond that, I, I, I think um, uh, I want to bring issue of religion and ethnicity to the whole equation. Uh, we cannot, and I, I see some of my um, brothers and uh, even members of uh, the aspirants from the north saying, oh, let's look at competence. It really does not matter about the faith or the region. Mm. Uh, let's just move forward. I, I, I beg to disagree. Uh, APC, the reason why APC uh, was challenged uh, with his victory uh, in uh, February and March was largely because of this Muslim-Muslim ticket. Uh, you cannot say it does not matter. One religion is dominating the space. And then you say it does not matter. Let's just look at competence. I, I don't I don't share that view. Even though I'm not a religious bigot, I'm very liberal in my faith. But, but, but sir, I, this I is the that. 23rd. So permit me to interrupt you for a second. This is the 23rd year of our uninterrupted democratic experience. I mean, we should have made progress to see beyond religion. In 1993, uh, there were Muslim Muslim candidates, uh, Chief MK Abiola against uh, Bashir Tofa. And uh, we seem to have been okay with it back then. So, why is it that so many years later uh, we're still dealing uh, with issues such as uh, religion over competence and capacity? No, mark, mark my word. I didn't say religion over competence. I'm saying yes. Religion does matter because section 14 sub 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic talks about federal character principle. And in federal character principle, you need it for national coercion and national unity and national loyalty. You cannot say it does not matter. Number one position goes to uh, the, the Muslim. Number two position is Muslim. Number five position is Muslim. Number three and number four, you just want to throw it open and say it does not matter. Nigeria is a secular state, mm. and you need to respect the diversity, religious and ethnic diversity. Those who are making the argument that religion does not matter, but they don't want two people to come from the same geopolitical zone, that is Kaduna and Kanu. Why are they opposed to that? Mm. If it does not matter, if, if, religi if uh, regional balancing does not matter, then we can allow uh, APC to go ahead, have uh, the deputy president of Senate from Kano, and then have the uh, speaker from Kaduna. Uh, but the, the constitution talks about diversity. And Nigeria is um, heterogeneous. Nigeria is an heterogeneous country. And much as whether it's for symbolism or tokenism, we need to reflect that diversity in the leadership, um, uh, that plurality in the leadership position of this country. Because in the order of protocol, my brother, in the order of protocol, mm. you mentioned the president, vice president, president of the Senate, the speaker of House of Reps, the chief justice of Nigeria. The reason, part of the, part of the, uh, part of the 
uh, accusation of regionalism and provincialism that was leveled against uh, the Algoin president was that he did not pay attention to plurality and diversity of this country. That's why you have out of almost 17 or 21 heads of uh, military <laughs> institutions, from police to the army to air force and all of the DSS, you you do not have one single person from the southeast, southeast geopolitical zone leading any of the uh, security and defense agency. And that is a big minus. It shows that you do not trust a particular ethnic group or religious mm. group. Oh, I am not saying that in, in looking at the faith of the aspirant, we should sacrifice competence. I've Hello. Okay, I think we have some audio challenges with Gideo Joe. I would like to bring in Adenike uh, back into the conversation. Said, okay. The, okay. Uh, I'll let you complete your thoughts, uh, Gideo, before we move on. Yes. So all the candidates who have aspired are all competent. They are all ranking members. They are knowledgeable about um, assembly matters. So when you are, it's like somebody, you, you, you benchmark uh, the, the um, prerequisite for a particular position. First degree, all of you should have first degree, no, not a minimum of a um, two one, that's second class upper. Mm -hmm. And then everybody that show up have that, you should have 10 years experience, everybody has that. Then you are looking for distinguishing features. You are looking at the plurality of the organization. How are you so sure that this company that has no single Muslim will not be seen in the eye of the Muslim as being uh, uh, aidful of the Islamic faith? So you need to also consider them so you can use that as a criterion to appoint that person. But you have established a minimum benchmark that the person is competent, is experienced, is knowledgeable, that is the way I see this thing. I'm not a bigot. I'm not saying uh, that, um, uh, you know, I'm not fanatical about it. Mm -hmm. Even in the Afghan administration, you could see that the number one citizen is a, is a Muslim, number two is Christian, but number three and number four and number five are Muslims. But let that diversity be reflected among the top three, four, five positions so that it calms the frame maps of those who think. I have said, the reason why Ashwad Bola Ahmed Tinubu lost Lagos was partly because of this Muslim Muslim ticket. The Christian faith, you know many religious leaders that preach against voting for APC, that voting APC is tantamount to uh, Islamization or subscribing to the Islamization mm. agenda of the government. So for that singular reason, some people just said, our pastor has said, our general officer has said that we should not vote Muslim Muslim. So they do. Remember, Khan, Khan Christian Association of Nigeria issued a statement telling all its member associations not to vote for Muslim Muslim ticket. So it is that sensitive. It is mm. that sensitive. And it is for that reason I'm saying, please let us step this look at that. Uh, Okay, uh, sorry, we're, we're, uh, we're fast run, out, we're out of time. My directors are telling me uh, that we have to go now. I wish we had more time uh, to deal with this very important issue. And uh, you're very right when you say, I, I believe the framers of the Constitution uh, missed out and enforcing it. Uh, we've seen a sort of enforcement with the appointment of ministers, which says they must come from 36 states and uh, we have that geopolitical spread. But in terms of other key appointments, uh, it wasn't uh, instructed in the Constitution. Thank you very much, uh, Gideo Joe, Public Affairs Analyst, and also at Denike, a law by Programs Director at Data Fight. Uh, thank you both for joining us on the conversation. We do appreciate your time and contribution. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And that concludes our conversation today. In the first half, we looked at the anti-government protests in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We just concluded our conversation on the speakership race for the 10th National Assembly. And Benga Borua, thank you for being a...